The MCU will never be the same. The way has been paved for some of the biggest comic book sagas or stories to be told now in the Marvel Cinematic Universe that just couldn't be told before now. But maybe you're not sure why Kamala Khan, aka Miss Marvel, is such a big deal in the MCU, or you don't understand why there was so much table setting during the Miss Marvel miniseries on Disney Plus when you saw it. Like, why did they take all this time to tell Kamala's story, discuss her family lineage, all of that stuff? Perhaps you've heard Kevin Feige talking about how much Kamala's origin story impacts the entire MCU moving forward. And you don't understand, even now, why that's the case. But the good folks at Marvel know what they're doing, and there's a method to the madness. And you cannot sleep on Miss Marvel anymore if you were doing it before. She's connected to the first family of superheroes in a way that you'd never have understood without that miniseries of hers. And we're going to cover why that's the case and why that's so critically important right now. Welcome back to the Mama Saga, where this Marvel-loving mama is a mother by day, but breaks down comic book sagas, movies, and shows like Miss Marvel by night. Before we go any further, to be fair, spoiler alert, there are spoilers in this video, so if you haven't watched all of the Miss Marvel miniseries on Disney Plus yet, Go on ahead, exit this video, <laughs> go catch up, and then you can come back and you'll enjoy this video more. Okay, so when it comes to Miss Marvel and why you can't dismiss her importance to the MCU moving forward, first we have to examine her connection to the Negabands. If you've watched all of the Miss Marvel miniseries, then you know. Kamala Khan's great-grandmother Aisha was there when a negaband was discovered on a severed blue arm at what turned out to be a Ten Rings temple in what was British-occupied India at the time. I was one of the few Marvel theorists in the beginning to confirm that this piece of Kree tech was what it was, an individual negaband. Now, whether Shang-Chi's Ten Rings are somehow part of the pair or set from which Aisha's negaband came from, remains to be seen. Theorists Eric Voss from New Rockstars and Ryan Airy from Screen Crush have definitely given their theories about the rings, and I'll link to those specific videos if you've missed them. They're great, but the bottom line is Kamala coming into the ownership of one of these two negabands is critical because of all of the powers they convey upon her, and she's only just getting started learning about them. But I've covered those powers and why they're critical in my video, Negabands, Why Does Miss Marvel Have Them? So if you haven't seen that video yet, please be sure to check it out after you're done seeing this one. The negabands in the MCU do not just unlock or augment or boost Kamala Khan's Jin-based or Noor-based powers that she's inherited from her maternal bloodline. They are critical for several reasons, the first of which having to do with her connection to the negative zone. I covered in my recent video, Why Miss Marvel is the Future of the MCU, how the Negabands emerged in the Marvel comic book saga overall, with Kree warrior Captain Marvel having one pair of them and human Rick Jones having another pair of them. And the two swapped in and out of the negative zone because they had them. So Kamala has a bangle that is a Negaband at the end of the day, and at the post credit scene of episode six of the Miss Marvel miniseries, it was confirmed that it was a Negaband because just like with Captain Marvel and Rick Jones, you now have the Carol Danvers version of Captain Marvel and the human and gen hybrid that is Kamala Khan. And those two women swap places with one another because of that band. So what, who cares, you ask? Well, the negative zone is super critical to where the Marvel Cinematic Universe is going, which will ultimately include everything from the Kree Scroll War, the Marvels, and yes, even the Fantastic Four. That's why you care. Let's break it all down. The negative zone is one of Marvel's strangest places ever. 
It's been described as a pocket dimension of Earth 616. It's also been described as an antimatter continuum that exists alongside the continuum that our own Earth occupies. Remember the presentation Walid gave Kamala when she was visiting the Red Daggers? Remember how the newer dimension could, if the veil was lifted, consume our planet and everything on it? Ugh. Well, guess what? The negative zone is an alien universe that consists of antimatter. So, according to Marvel based science, keep in mind, antimatter is matter composed of particles serving as counterparticles of the particles composing positive matter, or the matter that our universe is constructed of. But antimatter has the opposite charges, like antiprotons instead of protons, and positrons instead of electrons. And according to Marvel itself, should positive matter come into contact with antimatter, then both will be annihilated and converted into energy. This all sounds so sciencey. I don't blame you if your eyes are starting to glaze over. Even here, I just kind of want to say, ew. So, what does all this mean? It means that anything moving from one universe to another like this must reverse its polarity on a molecular level or be instantly annihilated. Ew. Well, think about it. If Kamala has now been sucked into the negative zone because she's got a nega band, just like Captain Marvel and Rick Jones, both she and the Carol Danvers version of Captain Marvel have swapped places and can survive the experience because of the Kree tech that Carol Danvers Adams have been mixed with in the MCU and the Kree tech that Kamala has on her arm. The negative zone is ruled by a Nihilus, an ugly creature, ugh, born from the aftermath of a crew of critters visiting the zone whose ship crashed. So before they died, as a result of the crash, those critters released spores. Ugh. And from those spores, an insectoid creature evolved and mutated so that he ended up having a high intelligence. And guess what? Thanks to that heightened intelligence, Annihilus was able to go to the wreckage of his bloodline ship to fashion himself some armor and a helmet, you know, from the pieces of the wreckage. Plus, he created a control rod that extended his lifespan. That control rod was something that Annihilus fiercely protected because the only thing he feared was death. And it's the control rod that created a connection between Annihilus and the Negative Zone with one of the most powerful families in all of Marvel. Meaning, when it comes to Miss Marvel, the Nega Band and the corresponding Negative Zone in the MCU may now account for her connection to the Fantastic Four. Yes, sure, Kamala is confirmed to be a mutant by her bestie Bruno Corelli in episode six of the Miss Marvel, you know, Disney Plus miniseries, and that's super exciting, but do you know what? The fact that her storyline can now allow for Reeve Richards and the Fantastic Four to come about in the Marvel Cinematic Universe is equally exciting. Look, if you know the Marvel comic book saga overall, then you know that Reed Richards was the one who discovered the Negative Zone and created the first portal between that universe and our own. Of course, the Fantastic Four traveled through that portal multiple times, and when they weren't sending certain powerful bad guys off to the Negative Zone as some sort of glorified bad guy trash can, ugh, they were visiting the Negative Negative zone to fend off Annihilus's attempts to take over Earth. So keep in mind the comic book saga, the point of contact between the two universes was known as the exploding atmosphere. Now I don't know, when the veil opened up in episode 5 of the Miss Marvel miniseries, there wasn't so much an explosion that happened when the stubborn clandestines encountered the point of contact between the newer dimension and our own, it was more like an incineration. Ugh. If memory serves, Reed Richards first encountered Annihilus when he stole his control rod to treat Susan Richards during the course of her pregnancy, which of course caused Annihilus to be ticked off. But you know, when they were done with it, Reed returned the control rod to Annihilus. You know, 
Annihilus still wasn't thrilled and would proceed to attempt to enter into our universe to take it over, and the Fantastic Four would constantly beat him back or be involved in the effort to beat Annihilus until Marvel Comics' Annihilus event occurred when he, along with his insect army known as the Annihilation Wave, finally attacked Xandar and destroyed it, leaving Richard Ryder or Nova as the sole survivor of that world. We know that Nova is going to be an MCU project, but we also know that in the MCU, Thanos destroyed Xandar to get the Power Stone from the Nova Corps headquarters. So it's not unusual for the MCU to part ways with the Marvel comic book saga overall, but still it's been rumored that the Disney Plus secret invasion is connected not just to the Marvels where Kamala Khan will team up with Captain Marvel and Monica Rambeau, but also to the larger story of Secret Wars, which the Russo brothers are teasing will be the end game of the current phase of the MCU. We're likely gonna have the events of the Kree Scroll War blend into the events that have already put been put into motion in Doctor Strange 2. Incursions, which are a critical part of the whole Secret Wars storyline. And Kamala has been hailed as Kevin Feige as being critical to the overarching storyline of the next phases of the MCU. I'm telling you, you cannot sleep on Kamala Khan's Miss Marvel. She's ushering in mutants, the Negative Zone, the Fantastic Four, and Secret Wars. So seriously, she's only just begun to dominate in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Get to know her. She's here to stay. Anyway, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok and subscribe to The Mama Saga for more comic book saga breakdowns, Salty Mama style. Thanks for watching. Take care and see you next time.